Hello students, how are you? In the previous uh, video, we have discussed till phylum annelid and uh, we have discussed various characteristics of various phylums. Okay, we were discussing on general points like level of organization. We told you that different level of organizations were cells, tissues, organ, organ system, etc. Then we talked about symmetry that uh, the symmetry is of three types. I told you asymmetry, radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. Asymmetry means there is no plane which can divide an organism into two equal halves. For example, porifera. Then we talked about radial symmetry. Radial symmetry was there may be more than one plane which can divide the organism into two equal halves. Okay, and then bilateral symmetry that there is a unique plane, only single plane that can divide organism into two equal halves. That is left and right. Okay. Then another characteristic that, uh, that we discussed for the various phylums was segmentation. That whether <coughs> the parts in the body were present or not. Okay. Then the next and the very important one we discussed about sea lobe, the classification on the basis of sea lobe, whether the cavity is present or not. So it was of three types: a coelomate, pseudo coelomate, and coelomate. A coelomate was when the coelom is absent; there is no coelom, no cavity, body. There is no body cavity. Okay. Then we discuss pseudo coelomate. Pseudo means false. So there is a cavity, but it is false-like, means fluid-filled cavity. And third was coelomate, means there is true cavity is present. Okay, students. <coughs> so these were some of the uh, points that we discussed in each of the phylums. Okay. Okay, students. So let's start with now phylum Arthropoda. See what does the word arthropod means? Arthropod means jointed legs. Okay, the word arthropod means jointed legs. This probably the largest group of animals, or we can say it is the largest phylum. Okay, let's take a look at some characteristics. Level of organization, it is organ system. Symmetry, bilaterally symmetrical. Segmentation is present. That our organs can be identified separately. Body cavity or coelom, yes, true body cavity. So they are coelomate. Okay, because of the presence of true body cavity, presence of organs, definite organs are present. Examples: prawns and butterflies. Okay. Other characteristics. I told you the word arthropod means jointed legs. So they have jointed legs. They have an open circulatory system. That is, there are no well-defined blood vessels. In the previous lecture, I told you there are two kind of circulation. One is open circulation, and another is closed circulation. when there is a network of blood vessel a proper pathway is there for the flow of blood okay then that kind of circulation is known as closed circulation as we see in uh, humans but when there is no proper network for the flow of blood and the blood just flows into in the cavities and the organs that are present are directly bathed in the blood that kind of uh, circulatory system is known as open circulatory system so the uh, phylum arthropod they have an open circulatory system that is there are no well defined blood vessels and third they have chitinous exoskeleton okay the outermost layer that is covered by chitin okay so some important characteristics like are symmetry they are bilateral symmetry segmentation is present body cavity or coelom true body cavity presence of organs up is there examples prawns and butterflies so these are some examples of phylum arthropod scorpion cockroach as you know the uh, scientific name of cockroaches periplaneta americana then spider butterfly okay the common house fly is also example of arthropod okay musca domestica i hope uh, phylum arthropoda is clear to all of you Next, move on to the next phylum, phylum Mollusca. Okay, phylum Mollusca. Level of organization in phylum Mollusca is organ system level. They have three layers, so that's why they are triploblastic. Okay, in the previous video, I also told about the difference between diploblastic and the triploblastic. Clear, students? so the cells have three layers that is why they are called triploblastic symmetry bilateral symmetrical they are bilaterally symmetrical segmentation little segmentation is present body cavity 
सी लो इट इज रिड्यूस्ड प्रेजेंस ऑफ ऑर्गन्स डेफिनेट ऑर्गन्स आर प्रेजेंट एग्जाम्पल्स आर स्नेल्स लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट अदर कैरेक्टर्स बॉडी इज डिवाइडेड इंटू हेड विसरल मास एंड मसूरल मस्कुलर फुट ओके सो इट इज डिवाइड इंटू थ्री पार्ट हेड विसरल मास एंड मस्कुलर फुट सम ऑफ द मॉलस्क हैव हार्ड एक्सटर्नल शेल लाइक दैट ऑफ स्नेल्स एंड सम हैव इंटरनल रिड्यूस शेल लाइक दैट इन ऑक्टोपस ओके अगेन दे हैव एन ओपन सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम देर इज अ किडनी लाइक ऑर्गन फॉर एक्सक्रीशन ओके सो दैट्स वाई इट वॉज सेट दैट द लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज ऑर्गन सिस्टम दे हैव डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ऑर्गन ओके ओपन सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम बॉडी इज डिवाइडेड इन टू हेड विसरल मास एंड मसुलर मस्कुलर फुट दीज आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ फाइलम मॉलस्का डेंटेलियम ऑक्टोपस सीपिया लैंड स्नेल पर्ल ऑइस्टर एटसेट्रा ओके स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट फाइलम फाइलम इज एकाइनो डरमेटा लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फाइलम एकाइनो डरमेटा इज ऑर्गन सिस्टम इट इज ऑल्सो ट्रिप्लो ब्लास्टिक सिमेट्री नाउ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन लार्वल स्टेजेस इट इज बायोलेटरली सिमेट्रिकल वेर एज इन एडल्ट इट इज रेडियली सिमेट्रिकल वी नो इन सम ऑर्गेनिजम वेन न्यू जनरेशन कम्स आउट फ्रॉम एग then there is a larval stage and that larval stage has very various changes that turns into adults okay larval stage goes into transformation so in larval stage it is bilaterally symmetrical phylum echinodermata organisms and adults are radially symmetrical okay segmentation no segmentation is present body cavity true body cavity is present in phylum echinodermata so that's why they are called as coelomate okay presence of organs definite organs are present example starfish and sea cucumber other characteristics they have spiny dermis made up of calcium carbonate very important outermost okay spiny dermis they have a water vascular system which helps in feeding and locomotion okay in periphera we also discussed there was a canal system that was also responsible for feeding okay food and water here a water vascular system is present which helps in feeding and locomotion for movement these are the examples of phylum echinodermata echinus antedon holotherian ophiothrix and asteria asteria is starfish okay Holothuria is a sea cucumber. Okay, students. Let's move on to the next kingdom. Oh, sorry, phylum. Very important phylum Chordata. Now, what are the characteristics of phylum Chordata? They have a notochord. What is notochord? It is a rod-shaped structure that provides skeletal support to the body. It is found in embryonic stage of all chordates. and in adult stage for some chordates very important the first characteristic of chordates they have a specific that is notochord it is a rod shaped structure that provides skeletal support to the body found in embryonic stage of all chordates and in adult stage for some chordates a nerve cord that connects brain these are the characteristic next characteristic is the nerve cord present that connects brain most aquatic animals have a pharyngeal slit that allows the exit of water okay pharyngeal gill slits that allow the exit of water very important then they have a post anal tail made up of muscles and skeletal elements that help in balancing okay so notochord a nerve cord pharyngeal gill slits and a post anal tail okay these are the characteristics of phylum chordata okay you can see a dorsal hollow nerve cord is present below that it is a notochord is also present the dorsal hollow nerve cord connects to the brain okay there is pharynx with gill slits okay so these are the characteristics of phylum chordates now the sub phylum of protochordata 
the subphylum protochordate okay we discuss the phylum chordata then the subphylum protochordate level of organization organ systems the cells have three layers triploblastic notochord present in some stage of life because present in some stage of life so that's why they are known as proto okay pre notochord present in some stage of life symmetry bilateral symmetrical segmentation no segmentation is present body cavity or coelom yes there is a coelom is present so they are called coelomate presence of organs definite organs are present example is acedia herdmania okay <clears throat> in a, ncrt another example other examples are also given like balenoglossus amphioxus okay the diagram of balenoglossus is given in ncrt okay students here the diagram is of herdmania okay now let's move on to the subphylum vertebrata okay these we are all studying under chordates okay first we discussed about phylum chordata what were the general characteristics of phylum chordata then subphylum means the division of that okay first we discussed subphylum protochordata and now it's for vertebrate okay further this phylum subphylum vertebrate will be divided into further five classes that we'll discuss pisces amphibia reptilia and aves and mammals okay clear students so let's start with subphylum vertebrata what are the characteristics of subphylum vertebrata let's see level of organization is organ system highly developed tissues the cells have three layers upper layer and the inner layer that's why triploblastic three layers so that's why it will be triploblastic symmetry again bilateral symmetry only a unique plane which divides organism into two equal halves okay then symmetry bilateral bilateral symmetrical eh? segmentation is present body cavity coelom present well defined body cavity is present okay presence of organs definite organs are present examples mammals birds fishes very important okay now other characteristics they have vertebral column developed from notochord now vertebrates what happens that notochord we discussed the presence of notochord that notochord notochord develop into vertebral column so they have vertebral column developed from notochord the internal skeletal muscles can attach at various points of the body then there is a dorsal hollow nerve cord in the upper side of the back okay student we discussed it in the characteristic of the chordates that a nerve cord is present okay so i hope uh, the subphylum vertebrata the characteristics are clear level of organization in them is organ system they are bilaterally symmetrical segmentation is present they have they are coelomate means Uh, body cavity true body cavity is present presence of organ is also there examples are mammals birds and fishes very important so these are other characteristics okay they have vertebral column developed from notochord the internal skeletal can attach at various points of the body muscles there is a dorsal dorsal hollow nerve cord in the upper side of the back okay students so we can say that all chordates possess the following features they have a notochord they have a dorsal nerve cord triploblastic they have paired gill pouches and are coelomate okay now the vertebrates are grouped into grouped into five classes that we have to study okay students let's take a look the five classes are fishes amphibia reptilia aves that is birds and mammalia okay so let's start with pisces that is fish pisces as the name they are these are the classes of fish okay exclusively aquatic animals okay now let's discuss the body type they have scales or plates on their body a muscular tail some have skeleton made up of cartilage and some have skeleton made up of bones and cartilage okay there may be two types some the skeleton may be <coughs> entirely made up of cartilage okay and some with a skeleton made of both bones and cartilage okay 
the example of cartilage fish that is entirely cartilaginous is sharks and with the skeleton made of both bone and cartilage like tuna and rohu tuna and rohu okay dear students they have scales on the body muscular tail and then some the skeleton may be made of cartilage and in some may be made up of both bones and cartilage i told you the example also the examples in which the skeleton made of entirely of cartilage is sharks and a skeleton made of both bones and cartilage in rohu <coughs> heart chambers the two chamber heart is present blood type what whether they are cold blooded or warm blooded the pisces the fishes are cold blooded what do you mean by cold blooded so student <coughs> this organism cannot maintain the internal body temperature so that's why they are called cold blooded what are warm blooded animals the warm blooded animals are the animals which can control the body temperature in despite of whatever the changes are going outside the environment okay but cold blooded animals cannot adjust that change okay then the respiration is through gills reproduction they lay eggs they are found exclude i told you exclusively aquatic animals and examples scoliodon mandarin fish okay other examples stingray electric ray angel fish etc okay uh, the diagram is given in ncert so you can take a look at diagram from there let's let's move on to the next class that is the class amphibia okay see these animals differ from the fish in the lack of the scales okay they have mucus gland in the skin and that the presence of mucus gland in the skin makes their skin smooth and slimy so that's why the body uh, body type is have smooth and slimy skin why because they have mucus gland okay students so they differ from fish in the lack of scales in having mucus gland now next is heart chamber now there are three chambers are present okay in fishes it was two chambered heart in amphibia there is three chambered heart the body temperature they are cold blooded means they also cannot maintain the constant body temperature so that's why you would have seen that these amphibia like frogs uh, frogs etc they are seen in a particular condition they are not seen throughout the year they are only seen in a particular condition why because they cannot maintain their body temperature okay then respiration very important in larval stage amphibia respire through gills and in adult stage lungs okay reproduction they lay eggs okay found at land and water amphibia name suggest amphi means dual nature so land and water example is toad and hydra sorry hyla hyla is tree frog okay other examples are salamander okay students i hope amphibia is clear to you let's move on to the next that is reptilia the body type they have dry scales reptilia have dry scales heart chambers very important they have a three chambered heart except crocodile which has a four chambered heart okay all the reptilians reptilians have three chambered heart except crocodile which has four chambered heart the body temperature they are cold blooded means again they cannot maintain their body temperature respiration with the help of lungs reproduction they lay eggs they are found at land and water both examples turtles king cobra okay other example may be flying lizard house wall lizard chameleon okay now next class is aves birds body type they have waterproof skin which is covered with feathers they have beak rather than teeth their fore limbs are developed into wings they have hollow bones or pneumatic bones very important character characteristics for the aves is presence of hollow bones or that are called pneumatic bones okay these presence of pneumatic bones why why it is important see presence of pneumat uh, pneumatic bones make their weight light and that's why it helps in flying okay students so they have hollow bones pneumatic bones 
and very important they're covered with feathers okay they have a beak rather than teeth then the heart it is four chambered heart now body temperature they are warm blooded you have seen birds are found in all kind of conditions okay so these are warm blooded means they can control the body temperature in spite of the external changes that are taking place in the surrounding respiration is through lungs reproduction they lay eggs and uh, they are found at land and air example we all know very common example crow pigeon okay sparrow may be one ostrich these are all the examples of aves okay then the next come next class and the last class of the phylum chordata is mammalia body type they have skin with hair and sweat glands okay very important they have skin with hairs and sweat glands the herd type is four chambered herd okay body temperature they are warm blooded means they can also control the body temperature in spite of the external changes in the surroundings respiration is through lungs okay then reproduction they give birth to young ones except some uh, there are some exceptions like duck-billed platypus and echidna okay so duck-billed platypus they lay egg see what happens they have uh, mammary glands which help for the nourishment okay for the production of milk and to nourish their young ones okay so because they give birth to young ones some of them like kangaroos they give birth to very poorly developed young ones you might have seen there is a pouch okay why it is that because the young one that has been given birth to by kangaroo it is very poorly developed so proper development can takes place now they are found at land water and air examples we all know humans cats etc okay rat whale bat these are the examples of phylum oh class mammalia okay students so i hope it is clear all the five classes to you so students animal kingdom can be classified into two that is invertebrates and vertebrates chordates comes in vertebrates and all other that are non chordates comes in invertebrates okay in invertebrates like phylum porifera cnidaria and other annelida arthropod mollusca echinodermata all other comes in the non chordate okay vertebrates you can see the class spices amphibia reptilia class aves and class mammalia okay in ncert page number 95 also there is a classification of animals is given see what it is given first the animals are divided on the basis of cellular and tissue level okay page number 95 in cellular level of organization only one example it is porifera then in tissue level further three class uh, three divisions are made that is on the basis of body cavity you can see okay so students it is given in ncert okay three divisions are there coelomate pseudo coelomate and a coelomate so in a coelomate that is no cavity present between epidermis and gastrodermis coelenterate and platyhelminthes okay so forifera coelenterate and platyhelminthes covered here then comes pseudo coelom then we all know that there are nematode in the pseudo coelom then further coelomates are further classified into two divisions okay that are mesodermal cells formed a single cell during growth of embryo and coelom form from pouches okay in from the endoderm so in the single cell during growth of embryo that comes annelida mollusca and arthropoda and coelom form from pouches they comes in they are further divided whether notochord is present or notochord is absent notochord is absent in echinodermata and notochord is present in chordates okay then chordates further divided into whether or not notochord is replaced by vertebral column or notochord present in at least larval but very rudimentary okay so notochord present in at least larval forms but very rudimentary it is protochordates but notochordate replaced by vertebral column in adults is vertebrate then again vertebrates are further classified into these five classes pisces amphibia reptilia aves and mammals okay in pisces exoskeleton of scales endoskeleton of maybe bones and cartilage or both in amphibia gills in larva lungs in most of adults slimy skin reptilia exoskeleton of scales lie, uh, lay eggs outside water in aves exoskeleton of feathers 
they also lay eggs outside water flight possible why because of presence of pneumatic bones then in mammalia exoskeleton of hair external ears mostly giving birth to li uh, live young ones okay living ones okay so this was the classification of kingdom animal animalia very important classification okay students now the last topic of this chapter that is nomenclature of living organism nomenclature means like the giving of scientific names to the organism for example the name of scientific name of human is homo sapiens i told you for example the scientific name of cockroaches periplaneta america americana for example house fly the uh, common name uh, scientific name is musca domestica okay so let's see why is nomenclature required it will help people identify an organism with a standard name anywhere in the world okay see what happens students we all know that in india only uh, in every part there is different languages okay so if there is not a common name for an organism or for anything then it becomes very difficult to contact okay means to tell what we are trying to say so why nomenclature is required this nomenclature is universal throughout the world okay this scientific names are universal there may be common name okay there may be common name for every organism different but the scientific name is same throughout the world so it will help people to identify an organism with a standard name anywhere in the world the whole hierarchy of an organism is not mentioned in the name what is mentioned is only genus and species of the organism are mentioned and concept of binomial nomenclature was given by carolus linnaeus okay so what do we represent in the name only genus and the species we told you the uh, i told you the hierarchy we studied kingdom phylum class order and so on genus till species okay so in the nomenclature only what is mentioned genus and species okay now there are certain conventions or we can say rules for writing binomial nomenclature let's take a look first genus name starts with a capital letter okay the first letter or first alphabet of genus name will be capital A species name starts with a small letter the scientific name of an organism is written in italics while printing if you are writing on computer or you are typing on computer and printing it then it is written in italics okay the genus name and the species name should be underlined separately while writing if you are writing on the copy or on or on any page then the name of the organism should be underlined separately while writing okay some examples of sci uh, scientific name are like for example leo panthera leo tiger panthera tigris okay human homo sapiens mango mangifera mangifera indica now you can see in if i take example of mango mangifera indica genus it starts with capital letter mangifera so m and indica you know species so it starts with a small letter okay while printing i told you it might be in, it must be in italics and genus name and species name should be underlined separately while writing okay so students this concludes the chapter diversity in living organism okay you have to again i am saying you have to read it properly you have to make the notes properly okay because the characteristics of each and every phylum are very important they need to be learned okay i hope it is clear to all of you now okay students so stay inside your house take care of yourselves thank you and have a nice day